Hi everyone! We are going to shoot a new Mythic Games video and this time it's going to be Darkest Dungeon. Hey! Hello! Hello everyone! So uh, we are going to shoot Darkest Dungeon uh, in, our, in the Mythic offices uh, and we have three guests from Mythic Games <laughs> uh, and that I'm going to introduce. So here is Antoine. Hi! We have Séverine. Hello. We have Erwan. Hey. And we have already chosen our characters, right? So I'm going to play the Crusader because I really like the Crusader. Uh, and he's an iconic character. A mighty character. sword so arm anchored he's by kind of a holy purpose. Buff guy. Uh, a zealous he's a warrior. Tank. He's, he doesn't move very fast, but he usually is pretty good at hitting the enemies. Antoine, what are you going to have? Uh, so I'm going to play the Vestal. So, kind of the healer of the group, because I think we may need that at some point. We may. Yeah, we, <laughs> we absolutely may need a healer at some point. So, so yeah. she's she's a healer, yeah. but she can also do some damage from... Yeah, she, a she sister of battle, pious and nice unrelenting. Damage, uh, if I manage to be in range of the enemies, and yeah. I'd rather not be too in range because <laughs> 12 life points is pretty, pretty low. Yes, 12 is not much, I confirm. What about you, Severine? I'm playing the Highwayman. So he's a pretty tough guy. Elusive, he really hits evasive, he plays persistent. With that means Righteous he traits from for a rogue. Distance. And that's very useful when you have enemies that run fast or that are pretty dangerous. And do you like this character? Yeah, very much. He's very... Uh, he's one of the first characters. Yes, in the video, video game. game. Yeah, absolutely, yes. And he's very useful. Okay. What about you, Erwan? Well, I settled on the Jester, because we oh, need some Jester. support to you go You will be him. laughing still So I'm going to be mainly at the end. on giving buffs to, to, to you guys, and to really stress with the mandolin. Because <laughs> <laughs> we really need music in these dark times. Isn't he kind of a weird character? Yeah, he's, he's a bit of a oddball. Like he can dodge pretty well. He moves really fast, but he hits like a wet noodle. <laughs> but he's good at supporting people and going everywhere, basically. We ready to to go? Sure. I think so yeah. So how do we? Well, let me first uh, give you, just to remind you how uh, this game plays. Uh, so this is Darkest Dungeon. We are going to play as a campaign, and this is the first game of a campaign. So usually. Uh, the ultimate goal is to enter the darkest dungeon and defeat the final boss. But before you can do that, you need to accomplish to, to, to do a series of quests uh, from level 1 to level 3. You will have three level 1 dungeon quests, then three level 2 dungeon quests, then three level 3 dungeon quests, and then uh, two dungeon quests in the darkest dungeon until you finally meet uh, the ultimate uh, boss. <laughs> so, an evil. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, we all play together against the system. It's a cooperative, roguelike, dungeon crawl, RPG game, right? So, uh, that means uh, the dungeon will be generated randomly every time we play a new game. Uh, the interest of this game is that you keep your characters through uh, throughout the game uh, and you try to level them up of course we have the mini here that I can sh I can show you uh, we, we will all play with painted minis the game comes unpainted but we will have we will give you some tutorial to show you how to paint them on the board you have the level of the character so he's level one he can level up to three we have the name of the character. Here is his dodge ability. I told you I was a bit slow uh, and he has zero dodge. Whereas uh, the Jester, for instance, has two. He's much better at dodging. This is my hit point, so that's a lot, pretty much. Uh, I think I have, yeah, yeah. The, have most, the, the most the uh, most hit yeah. points of all of you. Uh, but this is, uh, this is a, a step, right? A, a, yeah. A a foot, speed. yeah. The, this is the movement. So I only have one, which means I can only move one uh, when when on on a tile. Uh, this is my resistance, so I'm resistant to stun, 
and I have no immunities. So resistance is not as strong as him immunity, but we will see that later. Uh, here is my uh, Hamlet power. So that means uh, when we are in the Hamlet phase, uh, I have a special power. We all, we all do, uh, but we'll see that later. Here is uh, where you put the, uh, the dice. When you are at death store, that means you, you could be killed by any blow, then you put this dice here. Uh, the, in the final game, uh, this will be red. Uh, so let me also mention that this is a prototype. This is not the final material. It's going to evolve as we complete uh, this Kickstarter. So we, when you are at death's door, you put your dice here. Here you have the stress gouge. So you start here. When you reach 10, uh, then you, you start over. You get an affliction or a virtue, and then you start again. And if you reach 10 again, then you die from heart attack. Let's hope this doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, then here is where you put your um, skills. So you have to choose three skills when you start your game. So I've chosen mine. So I have Smite, Zealous Accusation and Stunning Blow. Uh, we all have chosen our three uh, skills out of seven. An important thing to know from now uh, is that you have here the stance the stances uh, you can use your skill with so for instance smite can be used for uh, the aggressive stance the defensive stance but I can't use it uh, for range stance nor support stance uh, zealous accusation is the same I can only use it if I'm in the first two row of stance uh, and uh, same for the stunning blow I did this because I know and I anticipate, I know that I'm going to be in front of everyone. So I, I decided to use t three very strong stents with the risk if by accident I'm at the back of not being able to use them. When you start level one, you have three skills. If you level up to two, then you will be able to choose a fourth skill. If you level up to three, you will be able to choose a fifth skill before you enter uh, a specific dungeon. Then you also have uh, a spot where you put your diseases. Uh, here is where you put your disease on next to your uh, board. Uh, your uh, quirks, right? You can put up to three here. Uh, and then you also have your, uh, on the left side, you have uh, the trinkets. Most of the things you find in the video games are back here, but you will see that they really have been done uh, so that you play a board game. It's not a video game, it's a board game, but you have the same uh, feelings. All right, so how do we start a new quest? Uh, I wonder. <laughs> I so we have arrived we have arrived uh, at the hamlet and uh, we are given uh, a, a first quest our first quest by the caretaker so uh, he's asking us uh, to get rid of uh, the evil that lurks uh, in this area we receive two quest cards and we're going to choose one of them so let's draw two quest cards this one and this one, I will show them here. So we have either wipe them out. Again, this is a prototype. There's a little typo here, but that we will correct or a uh, rising threat. What do you have on a quest card? Uh, you have the name of the quest. You have uh, the background. Uh, you have here on the top left. Sometimes you have it, sometimes you don't. These are the campfire, yeah. So when you have this number, that means if you have uh, cleared a room, you'll be able to, to use these points to spread them among us so that we heal or relieve some stress. So in, in those two quests that we have, this one will give us 12, which is a lot. This one will only give us eight, but maybe this one is a little less dangerous, we'll see. Then you have some lore. Uh, the monsters and holy presence uh, tainted the very opulent uh, halls of this estate, casting dark shadows over its ruins. Uh, thus, your orders were quite clear, slay them all. 
it's clearly uh, a kill them all uh, sort of mission, yeah. right? As the name suggests. Exactly, wipe them out, exactly. So on, on this card, you also have how many room tokens you have of which type. This one says you have two empty rooms, you have one dark room, you have three battles, and you have two traps, right? And then it gives you how many experience points you can earn, depending on a specific condition. Here, it's one experience point uh, per combat room cleared. So that means we can make, uh, we can earn up to, let's see if you heard. Three. Three, yes. Up to three X points, all right? Uh, the other one is Rising Threat. You want to read it for us? Yeah, sure. So, time passes and the demons grow stronger as they cast a heavier shadow upon your very existence. That's why you are tasked to enter the ruins and curl them their numbers, putting them to the sword. So, this one, in this one we will have to also curl monsters, but every curio room we find, so room with treasure we can loot, would have a battle. So this is much more dangerous, honestly. You think so? What do you guys think? Should we try the wipe them out, which is a, a very straightforward uh, kind of mission? Or should we try uh, the curios? Mm. What I do you think, Antoine? I think we should go for the wipe them out quest, because if we do the other one with the curios, we still have to battle three times, but there's the added Risk, uh, of, the risk curio. of the curios, yeah, and I. It's not wrong. That's pretty, pretty. Yeah, I'm not sure we're strong enough to handle the, all the yeah. negatives. That we I mean, we're curious. level one characters, uh, just beginners, so maybe we should try and just uh, take yeah. take it easy, maybe, right? Yeah. Maybe listen to the voice of reason and for once, mm, yeah. <laughs> so, do you agree, uh, Sébrine? Yeah, I totally agree because I know that curios are pretty dangerous, <laughs> and I know that I'm unlucky. So then we get all the you don't want to yeah, yeah. deal with too many curios, yeah. because yeah. we'll have to deal with curios anyway uh, in this game. Let's uh, just lessen the blow of chance. Okay, <laughs> so we'll choose... Uh, you, you agree, Erwan, yeah, with uh, this choice? Yeah. Okay, we'll choose the wipe them out uh, mission. The fiends must be driven back. And what better place to begin than the seat of our noble line? Oh, and before we do that, uh, before every time we, we start a new mission, we have to choose a boss, right? So, depending on how many bosses you have, and that could depend also on uh, how the campaign goes, because we have three bosses in the core box, plus there might be some new bosses uh, unlocked during the campaign. You pick a boss uh, at the beginning of the game, uh, and this will have an influence on three quests. Uh, so for this first quest, we have to draw a boss. So we have done it. Uh, and we have the, uh, let me show who, who we have. We have this guy, the Necromancer. So he will be here uh, and he will have an impact on, uh, on our three upcoming quest dungeons, right? And so we have a card for him. After battles, uh, remove non-unholy monsters from the monster's deck. Uh, this persists between dungeons until the necromancer is defeated. So, what does this, that mean, uh, Antoine? It means that every time we battle someone that's not undead, is removed from the monster pool, so the further we go in the dungeons, the, the, more, more, undead likely, we... yeah, the more likely we are to battle undead uh, monsters. Okay, so this is it. Then there's a special rule uh, of summoning, which comes when we reach the, uh, the boss fight. The boss fight, yes. With, so we don't need to read it now. And if I turn it over, uh, then you have uh, unsettling silhouettes. So graveyard is blocked. Uh, this is for the Hamlet face. So we don't need to 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 take care of this now. So now. We just follow what uh, the quest card tells us. It tells us uh, that we need two uh, empty rooms, one dark room, three battle room, and two. And then what we'll do is uh, we will draw, we will draw a, a dungeon layout, a dungeon card. So we have we have done it. So let's let's discover what it is. So we have here uh, the dungeon layout of what we're gonna do. So now uh, that this is done, I will put them uh, 
just here uh, randomly okay I just put them randomly uh, on, on this uh, on this map and that that means that uh, the dungeon is ready I will put the little uh, mini to uh, which is a, a little torch I will put it here uh, to to show our position on uh, on the dungeon and then I think we're ready to go yeah I think so too so let's just uh, mention a little bit uh, about the dice so you remember uh, about uh, the at death's door uh, dice uh, we will each start with 1d10 uh, we have provision dice which are these dice then we have um, exploration, exploration dice. dice so the first thing we need to do before we go we enter uh, a dungeon is to roll uh, for provisions uh, so we we each will roll two dice uh, and we will add up all these provisions to a common pool uh, and we'll explain how it works so please roll okay so I got a torch and uh, some food this is food and then I have some food so torches will be very useful uh, every time we are uh, we have a courier it can uh, n negate uh, the negative effect I know this because you know we, we, we have been a bit traumatized by some couriers in the past uh, so I know this is something I would definitely do or uh, if you enter a dark room, uh, you can get some stress because of that. Uh, so using a torch uh, is, is useful. Then we have food. Food uh, means uh, that if you are in the tunnels and you, you have a, a hunger for, for food, it can happen in the exploration dice. That means uh, removing a food dice means you don't suffer any penalty. Uh, it also means at any time uh, that you could, for free action, you could spend a food dice and gain one hit point, right? So, I mean, these are two pretty good dice. What did you guys roll? I rolled two food. Okay. So you only have three. Now we have three food. What did you roll, uh, Seven. I rolled a, a tool, a shovel. A shovel or a tool and uh, yeah and this is a bandage and a bandage so let's let me explain uh, to you what this is so the shovel uh, or tool uh, means when you have a rubble uh, you can spend this shovel to get rid of this rubble otherwise you will have to do it uh, with your own hands and you might get hurt if I remember correctly yeah. right yeah you do and uh, this bandage means if you bleed, because in this game, as Batman would say, you will bleed. Right? A lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> so if you bleed, uh, this can stop the bleeding. Yeah. Or, again, just like food, you can also use it to, uh, to, heal. Yeah. to heal. Here we have shovel, okay, so, so that's for you. Yeah. Uh, you have a shovel and you have a potion. That's it. So shovel, we know what it is, so we will add it to uh, the first shovel uh, or tool that we had, so that's a two. And then the potion means if you have a blight effect, because you could be poisoned in this game as well, right? Yeah, yeah. in addition yeah. to bleeding, yeah. Unfortunately, you can. <laughs> <laughs> so you could, get, uh, yeah, you could get poisoned, so if you have a blight effect, you can negate it immediately with this dice. It also relieves one stress. Oh, yeah. oh this, is it. Yeah. this is it. Okay, so we have our provisions. We're ready to enter the dungeon. So let's do it. Here we go. So let's enter. So as you can see here, uh, we are... Uh, this is the entrance. So we have our little token at the entrance. And before we enter the first room, we have to go through tunnels, which are represented by this dotted line. So I will put here and... What do we do when we enter tunnels? When we have to explore them. And how do we explore them? We roll two exploration dice. So we hope, you know, there are some sites that are dark. That means nothing happens, but you only have one chance out of six. So let's yeah. see. Let's hope. 
Oh. Oh, that's lucky. So fruit. I was not lucky, but Antoine got two. Look at he got two. Uh, two blank uh, faces. Yes, two blank faces. So this is Antoine. This is me. This is Erwan here, and this is uh, Severin. So how do we choose who who goes first? Well, we have and we have actually. I forgot to mention we have to decide our stance before we enter the dungeon, and. I told you I would like to be first, so I was first. Uh, so the Crusader is first. The Crusader uh, is first. Uh, then uh, the Highwayman uh, decided to be second. Uh, then uh, the Jester chose the third uh, stance. And at the very back is uh, the Vestal. Yes, I just carry you all. So you see, as always. one, as always. two, three, and four stance. So. We could change this in between rooms. We decided this before we entered, uh, that we wanted this position, uh, but you can change that uh, in between rooms. Uh, and then during battles, you can only change one stance by spending an action, but we'll, we'll see that. So I'm the first one uh, to play, and that means I'm the first one to choose among all the provision dice, whether I want to use them or not. So. I have a trap and I have a curio, which are two very bad uh, rolls. So, if I want to get rid of the trap, I have to spend a shovel dice. And I'm definitely going to do that. And I don't, I don't even need to ask uh, permission to the other guys. But then, if I, if I play bad, if I'm, uh, if I'm not nice, uh, they, won't, they won't be very nice to me as well. So, that's the risk I'm taking, but I know they need me. You know, I'm in, at the beginning, they need some heavy hitters, and I'm definitely one of them. Uh, and then we have the curio. So what happens when we get the curio? That means I need to get a curio card, and I have to decide before I pick this card, I have to decide whether I'm gonna take the negative effects or I'm gonna spend uh, a torch light to prevent this from happening. You wouldn't spend our only torch, would you? Well, Nabil? I'm the first guy, so it's the only one. We can't. Yes, uh, but yeah, who who me. else has one? I um, also have one. You also have one, but yeah. you're a jester and you're on third rank. You're not gonna be hit. So <laughs> if I have to choose between you and me, I'm first. You know, I'm gonna be hit by the enemies much more often than you are. So I'm gonna take this torch. Okay, so I'm gonna choose who to heal first as well. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you don't regret it. Well, I have 17 hit points, that's gonna be fine. Uh, okay, so second on the stance is the Highwayman. So uh, you, have, you have a rubble. No, you have food and you have uh, a rubble. Yeah, a rubble. Yeah. So to to get rid of food, you would need to spend one, one food provision. Yeah. We still have three. Uh, or you suffer two hit points per uh, level. Yes. Uh, so you're level one, so that would mean two wounds. And then you have uh, the rubble, so you would need one shovel. Otherwise, you would get, uh, I think it's the same, right? I think it's damage and stress. And stress. It's two each. Level. Yes, okay. it is. So I'm gonna get rid of the hunger because we have enough food. Okay, so yeah. you take one of the three. This and you get rid of this. Okay. And uh, what about the rubble? the rubble? Am I gonna use a shovel? We, no. Uh, it's pretty early. I think you can you can afford to take it. Honestly. Okay, you will take the trap then. Uh, yeah, I mean I, I'm going to. <laughs> I wouldn't lie to you. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna use a shovel. You're I using the lying. shovel? I wasn't lying though! I wouldn't really <laughs> take the trap! And so yeah, here it is. We've dice. been playing for less than 10 minutes and our group is already <laughs> <laughs> in shambles. <laughs> in shambles. <laughs> so you want the shovel? No, I won't use the shovel either. I think we should keep the shovel keep for the later. Shovel? Yeah. Since it's fairly early in the dungeon still, we can still afford to take some stress and damage because we can heal. So I can okay. heal stress. So what can, can you health. remind? Because I'm not sure I remember uh, what is uh, the effect for the rubble. You take two damage and two stress. It's 
as oh, many God. damage as your level. It's twice your level. Twice okay. your level yeah. for stress okay. and, and damage. Yeah. And damage? Yes. Well, I'm gonna take it because you ask so. We can and, I, it. and I'm kind today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. T today is the key today. word here. Yeah. Without tools of iron, you yeah. must rely on flesh and indefatigable purpose. Okay, so Thank she's you. saving our provision dice. So, well, yeah. he's saving the highwayman. Okay, uh, then it's the jester. Yeah. You have a trap and you have a curio. So just, just like I said, because I'm not lying, I'm gonna suffer the trap. I want to use our only shovel for a measly trap. So, the trap is actually a dangerous thing because the trap has... You will have to roll a dice and uh, if you roll a crit, you take... Eight damage. Eight damage! That's a lot. That's a lot. How many HP do you have? Ten. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so the trap could pretty much... You know, if you, it if you, could you roll, my, my life, yeah, on the spot. and it has an accuracy, I think, of eight, but minus your dodge. What is your dodge? My dodge is two. So, yeah, you have. I have good chances. Uh, good chance, chances of dodging it. Okay, go ahead. Roll your dice. Oh, <laughs> and I just got crit. That's, That's a crit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a crit. Okay. So okay. So you take eight damage. Eight damage. Carelessness Great. will find Great. no clemency <laughs> in this place. Yeah. Yeah. As I said, I, I know who to reel first. Yeah. And we still have a shovel though. We still do. And now you have a, a curio. Yeah, Leave nothing unchecked. There is much to be found in forgotten places. Okay, so you tell us what it is. It's a decorative urn. An urn holds ashes of the departed. As you grab the offering, a feeling of guilt washes over you. Your remorse is only interrupted by an abrupt pain, as you notice a tiny spring blade slashing your hand as a hidden compartment with some provisions is revealed. So, can you show the cards? Yes. Cover? So I'm gonna, we're gonna gain ten gold, which I'm gonna add to the, the party loot here. Yes. So as you can see, uh, as you will, you will see on this card, uh, decorative urn, uh, ten gold. So we we earn ten ten gold, which is very good. Because it's it's for everybody. That's very good. Then he has a negative curio. Then he has, as you know, his hand was damaged. He has a bleed for three turns, and then oh, he gets an extra provision dice, which is more than welcome. So let's do those in, in order. So first, I'll take a negative quirk. And I'm gonna I'm gonna develop a slight fear of the unknown. So whenever I find another curio, I'm gonna have. One extra stress. Oh, he's, f oh, he's afraid of curios. Oh, oh poor oh. Jester. I mean, I'm just not gonna roll them again. <laughs> uh, and then, Ever. Uh, do you have any resistance to, to, bleeding? Uh, no. to bleeding? No. No. So I'm gonna take free bleed. So, uh, for three turns, I'll take one bleed damage at the beginning of my turn. Okay. So since I only have two health left, I'm gonna need you, Artwan. <laughs> or it's gonna go really yes. bad really soon. <laughs> okay. So, just to explain how stacks work. Uh, when you receive, like, uh, as in this case, one bleed for three turns, you take three, one bleed tokens, you, you stack them in a pile, and you put them next to your board. Uh, and at the beginning of a, a battle phase, you look at what uh, all of your piles, and you take the... Take the, the topmost tokens, and you apply yeah. their effects. Yeah. So that means at the beginning of a turn, he will suffer one damage. And because he's only... He's got only two hit points left. This is a bit of a problem. Uh, and then you got an extra provision dice. Yeah. So I'm just going to roll that right now. That's a new shovel. Yeah. Okay. Well. So I um, could have used that shovel. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe okay. I should have. Okay. Is we'll your no? Yeah. Your negative. Well, your 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 curio. Okay. We have finished. Uh, oh no. Then it was Antoine. Antoine. What did you roll? I nothing! I was lucky enough to, to roll nothing. So. so this is very, very cool. Okay. Give me some of that luck, please. <laughs> you oh, see? No, I, I've, I've used it all up already, so... This is perfect. So, we have explored, uh, and now we are entering our first room. So we're here, and I will reveal, reveal the first room. It. What is it going to be? Oh, it's a battle room! No! <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. okay, we start okay. with the battle immediately and... 
I don't know if it's good or bad. Uh, well, I'm gonna run. Really we, fast, we'll see. Really we, we'll see. Please. So when we enter a battle and room, we, we need to, to me, yeah, we need to draw a room card. This is uh, a spiked pit. Let me show it here. This is a spiked pit. So it shows which uh, uh, tile you need to, to get. So we are in the ruins. So we are only going to have ruins uh, tiles. And it gives you the special uh, rules uh, for uh, this tile. So here we will have some little red splashes. Uh, so in the A1, uh, that means monsters standing there uh, will heal at the end of the, the turn, will heal for four. So we don't want them to stay there in, in this one, in the circle of power. Uh, and then you have the spiked pit where heroes and monsters alike uh, that are pushed or are standing here at the end of their turn, take three damage and suffer one bleed for three turns. Okay, so we will keep uh, we will keep this uh, little uh, card next to the tile, and we're just simply gonna put the spike pit tile. 